Hello and welcome to the show. Let me start off by saying uh, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. So it is um, uh, January 3rd, 2022. And this is a quick look at uh, Torchlight Stock Symbol TRCH uh, FTD data. And FTD stands for Failure to Deliver. So uh, this uh, this video uh, was uh, came about because of a comment from my last video. Thank a uh, big shout out and thanks to Marty Moore, who said, "Have you looked at the FTDs from before the Torch merger back in on June 28th of 2021?" And uh, my response was, "I haven't, but uh, sounds like a pretty good idea." You got me curious. Thanks. Expect a video on this soon. And here's the video. So thanks, Marty, for the um, for the question. And uh, you sparked my curiosity. So um, so that's what this video is all about. So uh, with that, what we are going to do is we're going to take uh, the same data that we got from the SEC, which is the the FTD data, and we're going to run the same. Uh, we're going to go through the same routine. Okay, so here's the the uh, the FTD data from the SEC, and we'll just uh, process that at the same way. Except we'll do a um, a keyword search for TRCH. And as you can see, we get an output, and when we look at what the output looks like, we get a bunch of uh, t Torchlight Energy Resources stuff. So, uh, so let's just remove a lot of the extraneous text from the output. Let's see, and um, we'll do the same processing. So we'll get back the header information. Oh, well, okay. The first thing to do is to uh, alter the date so that uh, we can separate out the year and month and day. So we're going to do that first. So, uh, so we're going all the way down, separating out the year and month and date and now we're going to uh, get back the header information so we're just going to take um, take the header data from from the original files and we'll put them back in as the first line and then we'll do a global search and replace changing the delimiter to a comma okay uh, the original delimiter was a bar by the way okay so replace all and we're done okay great so at that point, we'll save this as a CSV file, comma separated values. And we get s.csv. And, uh, and there we go. That's, that's the output file. So once we have the output file, we'll go into, uh, we'll go into the next uh, thing, which is to actually open it up into a spreadsheet. So we'll, in this case, we'll use, uh, well, We'll have a look at the output file first. <laughs> Seems to be Torchlight Energy Resources info, so that's that's fine. We'll open it up into a spreadsheet uh, by double clicking. That opens it up in numbers. Uh, we'll see the fails are listed in column D, and we'll just make that into a number that has a thousand separator, so we can easily tell how big the values are. And uh, since I can't uh, make heads or tails of uh, of a list of numbers. I'll like normally turn that into a graph so that I can see what's going on. Okay. So here I just made a bar chart, and uh, we'll just make the x-axis more um, more more readable by turning it uh, vertical. Let's see. Maybe perhaps we should go uh, right vertical. Mm, nope. I think uh, left vertical is probably better. So uh, so at that point we've got. Um, uh, we've got a graph of what the FTDs look like, and uh, and the x-axis is the dates, and the y-axis is the number of FTDs, right? So let's let's add a quick title, so we can see what's going on. We'll call this uh, Torch FTDs for 2021. Again, this is the last year that Torchlight was um, was tradable. Okay, so here we've got the data. And um, looks be 
that looks to be about it. Let's put this uh, back into our slides. So here we've got the, uh, the raw data from the spreadsheet and more data and more data. So we got basically three, uh, three, ta three huge tables of data. And if we look at that, we've got 123 lines, which represent 123 days of FTDs. And the first, and the first date is uh, January 4th, 2021. And it goes on till uh, June 29th of 2021. So that represents the first trading day all the way up to the last day that you could trade Torch. So it looks like Torch has been shorted every single day in 2021 and that there has been basically failures to deliver every single day in 2021. So that means the price of Torch has likely been forced downwards by tons of synthetic shares. The large number of failures to deliver indicate that there's a large short position because it's been continually shorted. So I really don't know how many synthetic shares there are. I wouldn't be surprised if it's many multiple times the number of shares that were actually issued. <laughs> there's just uh, there's just a lot of data right here. I'm I was not expecting to see 123 lines of data. So here's what the graph looks like. Um, and the first thing I can note about the graph is that uh, there's some huge volume spikes towards the end, <laughs> significantly higher than at any other point in. Um, at any other point in the year. So, uh, so what's happening there? Let's let's have a look. So, just looking at the last few days, we can see uh, what the torch FTDs look like, and uh, let's see. Uh, let's throw some uh, values on the graph so we can see what the uh, what uh, you know how many FTDs there are. We can see that uh, that these lines re are represented by these uh, by these bars. So on 623, looks like there were 8 million FTDs, failures to deliver. 624, there was 3.3 million FTDs, again, a very large number of FTDs. And on 628, there were over 10 million failures to deliver. So uh, that is a significant number of shares that have been failed to deliver on those, on those days. Um, and if the failures to deliver are just a small portion of the actual shares that were shorted, assuming most of them could actually have been, I don't know, uh, sourced from somewhere or borrowed, that means that the number of shares shorted must have been massive. So let's look at the share price and see what the share price looks like. <laughs> so here's the... Uh, it's actually hard to find the Torchlight... Um, uh, share prices because the the symbol is no longer traded. Torchlight Energy does no longer exist. However, I was able to find a website called barchart.com, and you can enter the symbol TRCH in there. And uh, here's a web link which you can use to uh, check this data yourself. But anyway, they uh, they apparently have Torchlight data uh, from the past, so you can have a look at that. And the first thing I can I'd like to note is that the volumes on the last on the last month or so, or in the last half of the month, are huge. They're very large. <laughs> so the question comes up: How many shares are being traded here? So uh, how many shares or how many shares were being traded? How many shares actually exist? I mean, do these volumes make sense? Because it goes up to looks like four hundred million or so. Uh, so I looked for the number of shares that. Uh, Torchlight says existed or so. Uh, if you look around, here's a website that says MacroAxis. They believe that there were 159.26 million Torchlight Energy shares that were issued. But uh, if we look further on down in time, we see that George Palacaris issued 164 million uh, Series A preferred shareholders, and those were were intended to go to Torchlight uh, shareholders. So there were probably about 165 million Torchlight shares, is what I'm guessing, because it um, looks like they were, you know, looks like um, each Torchlight shareholder got a Series A preferred shares. And George indicated that the transfer agent said that there were 165 million. So I'm guessing that there's 165 million Torchlight shares. Okay? That, or at least that's what my, um, that's what my reasoning is. So, Let's look at the number of, of uh, let's look at the price action, and it, 
and uh, the volumes on the last few days. So we see that um, 402 million shares were traded on 621 of 2021. 402 million shares were traded when there's about 165 million shares. That's insane. Basically, that's suggesting that every shareholder decided to sell and buy back their shares at multiple times at higher prices. <laughs> they didn't just decide to sell and buy back their shares. They decided to sell and every you know every shareholder decided to sell every single share that they had and then buy it back because they all decided that they made a mistake. Uh, and they did this multiple times, each time at a higher price, because if you look at it, the the end price of that day went up significantly, right? So the prices were going up that day, and the volumes were gigantic. So uh, I don't believe that to be the case. But what this really means is that there's likely to be a large number of synthetic shares, right? Probably multiple, so pro there's probably some multiple of the number of shares that were probably issued. Conservatively, you could guess that anywhere from 3x to 10x the number of shares issued. Who knows? I mean, it's really hard to say. So the torchlight short position is likely incredibly massive. Uh, this is probably a very conservative estimate of 3x to 10x the number of shares. So... And that's just from looking at volume and price action, right? That's not even looking at FTDs at this point. <laughs> okay. So, let's look at FTDs. And let's see if we can line up the FTDs with this volume and price action. Okay. We see that on, um, what was it, on 621, we get a massive volume spike. And uh, that is, by the way, not a massive volume spike on the FTDs. Interestingly enough, so that's uh, it's curious. So that means the price went up a lot. There was a massive volume spike, uh, and probably not a lot of shorting took place then. Who knows? So let's look at the data in general, right? So that on 621, according to the FTD data, uh, we see that there were, uh, let's see, 1.172 uh, 1. 1. 1. million shares were, were uh, failed to deliver, right? But um, on that day, which is uh, a large number, but again, not a not a huge number. And uh, but we see that the price action on that day was uh, six twenty seven, six dollars twenty seven cents. And if we look at uh, at uh, six twenty one, it doesn't look like the price action was around six dollars and twenty seven cents on that day. It looks like it's somewhere between. I don't know, just under $9 it opened, and it looks like it closed just uh, under $10. You know, spiking up even, you know, all the way up above, uh, almost hitting $11. Okay? So, the FTD price does not match the daily price on this... Um, on, 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 the, uh, on the bar charts, right? On, on the stock price. So... What's going on? I do note that on the following day, 622, the price does match because the 622 FTD price is $9.92 and the 621 price is $9.92. So I'm thinking that the FTD data the FTD data is off by one day to the price data. So that's probably the case. Um, so there'll probably need to be a slight adjustment made there. Interestingly enough, um, I'm seeing an additional day of FTD data, even with that one-day adjustment, because uh, I see on 628, the FTD price was $4.95, and on 629, there's an additional FTD, which has a price of $4.95. So um, even with that extra day, we seem to have some sort of extra day in there. However, the total amount of FTDs on that day are very small. They're something like 1,000, what, 800 and, 1,859. So it's a very small number of FTDs. It's not the big 10 million uh, line. So it doesn't actually even show up on, the, it's not even visible on, on the linear graph here. So for the most part, I think we can ignore that extra day. So let's line up this data, okay? So here's the uh, here's the bar chart.com stock quotes 
for the last few days. And I'm going to align that as best as I can with the FTD data. Right? Uh, so what do we see? So uh, so if you look at the uh, at the the highest price point uh, took place on June 21. There were not a lot of FTDs on that day. So that indicates that um, there wasn't a lot of shorting happening. But on the next day, we see a, a massive spike, right? A large FTD. And uh, that dropped the price from $10.08 down to $7. Okay, the previous day, we had a massive run-up in price on large volume of around 400 million shares, okay, which indicates that people bought more shares than existed, which, okay, so there was probably a large number of, uh, of synthetic shares going out. Uh, the following day, we had a bunch of FTDs, failures to deliver. Uh, and uh, so the FTD probably happened from the previous day. So it could be that the FTD happened from the previous day. Okay. In, in either case, we see that the that there's a large uh, that there's a massive amount of shorting going on on the on uh, on June 22. The price dropped from ten dollars and eight cents to seven dollars at the close again from a large amount of shorting. So the next day we have B or line item B. There is again a large FTD, which means massive shorting, and we see the price drop to $4.92. Uh, and then the, the day after that, um, on 6.24, we see that the FTDs drop significantly, but, uh, so the shorts are still affecting the price, right? There's still a lot of, there's still a fair number of FTDs, and the shorts are still affecting the price, but the price closes at about $4.72. So it's not, uh, the price hasn't dropped that much, but uh, but they have affected the price. It probably would have gone up significantly if not for the large amount of shorting. And the last day, the last day is really curious because we see this giant volume spike in FTDs, okay? That indicates that there's a massive amount of shorting that took place on the last day. Right. So, the, but the price rose only slightly to $4.95. Massive amount of shorting, very, very, very little change in price. Okay, so the only conclusion that I have is there must be a huge amount of buying on that last day by retail, because retail probably wanted to obtain the Series A preferred shares, or actually they wanted to obtain the dividend that would come from getting the Series A preferred shares. And because of that massive volume spike, I don't think that the torch shorts closed out their positions. It could be that they still have their positions open because we don't see any resulting closure of that position, right? Closing out that position would mean buying the shares. We don't see a ton of shares being bought here. So, uh, so there's some question as to what's going on here. I think the, I mean, personally, I think it's still open. So these are my conclusions. <coughs> and again, these are just rough, off-the-cuff conclusions, right? Torchlight has been shorted every single day in 2021, okay? The torchlight short position is likely massive, uh, and I can't even imagine how big it is. You know, I would not be surprised at 10 to 20x the number of shares that were issued. Uh, probably at least 3x the number of shares, who knows, but probably greater than 20x. It's, it's really hard to say. You can't tell from FTDs to the actual short position because, yeah, you, it, it's just hard to tell. Anyway, so the torchlight short positions have not been closed out from that last volume spike in the last day because we don't see a large, um, a large amount of buying. So the outstanding short position is still, the fact that there is an outstanding short position is extremely likely, okay? Um, the torchlight uh, short positions have also impacted the price of torchlight significantly, right? Supply demand has been distorted because when you increase supply by creating synthetic shares, you're suppressing the price. So, and, and that's been going on every single day of trading in 2021. That's, that's just significant. The, the price has been distorted day after day after day. We don't know how many, we don't know how, we, I have no clue what the price would actually be if you didn't, it, I mean, if there weren't this large number of, 
of um, of shorts that came about, right? I mean, if if you have true supply demand, instead of a massive short position being taken every single day, then that obviously affects the price. <laughs> There's no question about that. Uh, so. The last thing is the possible speculation, right? So if the short, if the torchlight shorts ever have to close out their positions, right, it's quite possible that MMAT and or MMTLP could have a massive positive correction in price, right? Um, it's, hard, it's really hard to say which way it would go and which and how it would happen, right? Um, but there could be a massive correction in either way. It, it's just, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> we really don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, just wanted to close out and say that this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. And this was me taking a quick look at the Torchlight FTD data. And I really had no idea how deep this rabbit hole was. It was just... Uh, it was just... It's beyond belief. <laughs> or at least it's beyond my belief. So anyway, so that's 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 my analysis and that's what I that's my take on it. So with that, I'd like to say goodbye. <laughs>